Hello everybody, welcome to Movie Master where we rank, review, talk, and trailer react to movies and TV shows. So um so today I'll be ranking all three Back to the Future movies again, because um um the last video I had a couple of um editations that weren't sticking to it and that probably weren't gonna be um good enough and suitable for an audience and get probably get grossed up by it. So I decided to re-upload this video. So I have about 10 to 9, 9 to 10 video ideas that I have to film and refilm. So this is the first out of the, ooh, um, cause, um, this is the first out of the four or five, six videos I have to refilm and re-upload. So today I'm going to re-rank, I'm going to rank all three Back to the Future movies. This is not including the anime TV series, nor the video game, nor comics, or anything else that came out in the franchise. This is the, only the three movies that pertained from 1985 to 1990. And spoiler warning if you guys have not seen the movie, but it came out in 1985, so I'm pretty sure you guys should have seen it by now. Plus, my mother was literally five when those came out, so um, yeah. Um, but you guys have had over nearly, I don't know, 30, 33 years to see all these movies, so, um, spoiler warning for you there, make sure this is just my opinion, you do not have to agree with me about how I rank these movies or how I put them in an order, and please tell me what your favorite Back to the Future movie is in the comments below, and also, tell me what ranking should I do next of a franchise. So yes, but if you want to know how um you should submit ideas for me to rank movies on, watch the rules and basics of my channel on my YouTube channel. Anywho, let's continue. Let's start. So number three is Back to the Future Part Two. Now this, out of all three Back to the Future movies, has been integrated in time a lot. Specifically, more with the year 2015. If you guys are not familiar with the franchise, which if you are, then go watch the movie because it's pretty good. And watch all three of them. Yeah, masterpieces. Um, October 25th, 2015 was the year that Marty and Doc traveled forward in time. And if you've watched these two YouTube videos called Everything That Back to the Future Got Right, Everything Back to the Future 2 Got Wrong. Sorry, correction, Everything Back to the Future Part 2 Got Right and Got Wrong. Basically, those videos summarize what the future of that Back to the Future Part 2 predicted got right and wrong. Search it up like, um... What Back to the Future Part 2 got right. And when you click it automatically, the um, second video, everything that, everything Back to the Future Part 2 did wrong would be in there. But um, it predicted that we would still wear curly, color, very pop, funk um, type of jerseys. And would have flying cars and hoverboards and futuristic holographic stuff like that on billboards. We still, we do have that type of stuff, but now that's like, ooh, four years after 2015, none of the stuff we've seen has been promised. Hoverboards, hell no, those two different hoverboards do not count. But the film overall is pretty okay. It, the flying car scene, the hoverboards are the two things I specifically wanted from the re in real life. We would never get that anyway, but it was going to be a cool idea if we got that type of stuff. So yes, and um, this movie has a cool way of how the timeline can be affected by one single tiny thing. And the almanac is one of my favorite pieces, and I love the plot of this second movie. It streams more to time travel than the first one ever did. The first one had a very small plot to make it easy for the people to follow the film. The second one bumps it up and makes it a very interesting plot, so you get sucked into the film, even if it kind of has a not-so-great thing. But the third movie has a bit of a odd plot and kind of breaks away from the last two films. So yes... I love the almanac, and overall the plot is a pretty good for the movie, but it, I just never favored it. It was a bit more darkened than the first movie. The actors were much more older, and it was filmed back-to-back -back with its sequel. So, yeah. And, um... But overall, I loved how the almanac could alter the timeline heavily, and Marty had to get it back in a very esque type of way. So I really liked it, and um, but overall, it was a good movie, but I just, it didn't feel good enough in my taste. Coming in at number two is Back to the Future Part 1. Now, Back to the Future Part 1 is one of the best movies, and I saw it when I was a kid, and I am 13 now, so when I was around 5 or 4 when my mom got the DVD when I was a kid, I did not grow, I grew up on half the Back to the Future movies. I grew up on the three films, the game, and the, um, 
animated TV show. Sadly, the four episodes got flagged by YouTube due to the fact of copyright reasons. You can't legally watch those on YouTube unless it's a YouTube original, because I don't know damn YouTube anyways. If YouTube, please help me. But um, overall, this movie's pretty good. It has cool plot lines. It is not as fame. It's famous, but it's not as famed as its two um, successors, and mainly the second one. The second one being the most recognizable of all of them. Back to the Future Part 1 has a cool, unique plot. Not as good as the second, but a bit better than the third. The first plot being Marty goes back in time and stops his parents from meeting. And he has to make sure to get back to 1985 and not be trapped on his timeline. And make sure his parents get back together so that his brother, sister, and him himself are not erased from existence. And that they are born, thanks to their mother and um, father um, merging again. I'm falling in love. I love the plot of this movie. It's funny. It is a bit weird how um um the rain wants to um made his own have to have um have it with his own son, with her own son, which is weird, but it's fun because he get he gets to see a whole new side of why. So like Marty treats George McFly like why is he such a wimp, and then we get to see how he was like Marty. Because in the in the early openings of the film, spoiler for the film. Is a uh, Marty after Marty gets rejected by a band group for playing in the enchantment under the sea dance? He questions to his girlfriend Jennifer that he's no one else is gonna accept him like that. And he and the same thing happened with his father when he wasn't writing a book and um and Marty wanted to read some, but um George said, No 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 no, what if people didn't like me? What if they told me I was no good? And that was a reliable thing for Marty, because he himself thought that nobody thought he would have been good with rock music, but his father taught him a valuable lesson of that. And in doing so, he made his parents and mom and dad fall in love in a better light and grow up. So yes, but overall, this movie is great. I love it. The DeLorean's awesome. It looks like a time machine. It's very 80s. Doc Brown is played brilliantly with humor. And a lot of fun and interesting and scientific areas plucked in and put in there by Christopher Lloyd. And it's Doc Einstein. It's a cool dog and inspired by a scientist. So yes, and Marty is a rela is a kind of relatable teenager. He's played by the cool Michael J. Fox, who has sadly got Parkinson's now. At this time, it was lucky that we got him, and even though he was played by Eric Stoltz originally, but we were lucky enough to get him on there, and thank God that he was able to shoot this film, even if he had to get dragged out of his Volkswagen and get carried to his into his house and get put into his bed. He filmed Family Ties back in the 80s, so he had to try and do Family Ties in the morning and do Back to the Future in the night, and then... Which is mostly why you see Marty's scenes, because in the film, back in 1985, around 1985... Um, after recently having to fire Eric Stoltz for unknown reasons, okay, let me go back, so, Michael J. Fox had got a job on Family Ties, and been working in the movie like Team Wolf, and director Robert Zemeckis, Bob, and producer Bob Gale, and executive producer Steven Spielberg came over to check out for some actors to play the part. Michael J. Fox was interested in playing the role, and, um, when they said, when the creator of, um, or producer, or whatever it was, a family tie said no. Um, later on, they had to recast it to Eric Stoltz. But when they filmed with him, they thought he didn't have the humor that Michael J. Fox would then incorporate into the character. So they had to fire him for unknown reasons. It's very complicated. So soon, the um, man who was doing family ties gave Michael J. Fox a script. He read it, he was interested, and finally he had to do a whole long thing where he shot family ties in the morning, got onto a vault, into a um, paddy, paddy wagon, and got driven all the way to Universal Studios, napping during that time, shot back to the future, went back to his house, and if he was still napping, they'll drag him out of it, took, take him out of the wagon, paddy, paddy wagon, take him into his house, and put him in his bed. Sounds a bit creepy and weird, but no, it was movies back then. And, um, on the weekends, most of the morning shots were shot on Saturdays and Sundays on his weekends when he was available when he wasn't shooting Family Ties. Which is, explains why half the scenes take place at night and in day, because he had to do a very rigorous schedule. But, yes. But, yes, Back to the Future 1 overall is a good movie, but, um, it does not concur to the one that I thought is still, and maybe still, my favorite Back to the Future movie. And at number one is Back to the Future Part 3. 
Now, I believe that Back to the Future Part 3 is a very good movie. At the time, I loved Cowboys and it incorporated the, the plot. It tied back into Back to the Future Part 1 and 2. And that's what Part 1 did. And that's what Part 2 did. Part 1 incorporated events from Part Part 2 incorporated events from Part 1. Part 1 set of events for Part 2 and 3. Part 2, Part 3 used events from Part 2 1. Do finish off the story nicely. And I love it. The cowboy-esque type of theme. The trains. All the cowboys. It was really cool. And the horse races. And the DeLorean getting destroyed. It's a sad moment. But it's a moving mo moment for the DeLorean getting destroyed. It means the end of an era for Doc and Marty. Even though it's 1990. The movie that was released. It was took place in 1985 still. It's nice to see that Marty learned has been learning his lesson since the events of the first film, not to mess with a timeline, even the singlest thing can, can go wrong. And that's what happened with Doc, he got distracted and started bumping and changing the timeline, like going, whoop, 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 let's take this up, let's take that up, let's throw this in, let's throw this in, let me, let me hang out with this dead girl that's supposed to be dead, throw this out, pop this in, pop this in, shove a time machine in there, blow up a train, and basically try to shoot a train conductor, blah, 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 throw that out, have two kids with a dead who woman who's supposed to be dead, and boom, got a new timeline. So yeah, but overall, it shows that Doc... Will Doc and Marty have swapped places where Doc has Marty has learned from his mistakes. Doc is getting distracted by love. That he's not learning. He's not listening to what he told Marty several times in the first two movies. But overall, Back to the Future Part Three, I consider my favorite Back to the Future movie, and hopefully that is it. So that is it for my ranking of all three Back to the Future movies. And um, make sure to tell me what your favorite Back to the Future movie is in the comments below and how you rank them. And also tell me what do you want me to rank next. And make sure to check out my other videos like my Transformers ranking, my How to Train Your Dragon ranking, and my Spider-Man movies ranking, and my thoughts on Marvel Spider-Man. Now this is the re-upload version, but I'm going to put that in the description. I'm going to make this my new re-upload version. So hopefully you guys will like this. So make sure to like subscribe, and um, click the notification bell, depending on what version of YouTube you are on. Um, but that's all. See ya. Bye.